We could have been called reapers, Goddard said, but our founders saw fit to call us scythes, because we are the weapons in mankind's immortal hand. You are a fine weapon, Rowan, sharp and precise, and when you strike, you are glorious to behold. Neil Schusterman. You're listening to Writing Roots, brought to you by Aspen House Publishing. Welcome to Writing Roots. I'm Lee Hole. And I'm Lee Esses. We talked last episode about the support group that the villain has, that chorus of people around him or her, that helps get all of these extra pieces done for the villain. The hero has that too, not just the sidekick, not just the secondary characters, but the group of people we call the society. They are a mixture of secondary and tertiary characters, and the group of people that existed prior to the hero entering the scene, oftentimes opposing the villain, or at least what the villain stands for. So let's get into some examples of this society and the varying ways that they can be represented in your story. One of the first examples that comes to mind for me is anytime you have a heist story, especially if the heist is a group of people pulling off this heist, then that group of people tends to be the society, the group of people that Kelsier brought together in Mistborn, or that Danny Ocean brought together in Ocean's Eleven. This group of people can be seen as the society. I think the Mistborn example is particularly relevant because not only do you have the main group of people that are carrying out the heist, but you have a lot of unnamed characters who are supporting them, like Breeze's group of rioters and soothers. So you have these tertiary societies that exist to support the main cause that the protagonists and main characters are carrying out. Some other examples would include the Jedi Temple, the other Jedi that exist that aren't particularly involved in this prophecy. You also have in Harry Potter, Dumbledore's Army or the Order of the Phoenix, these groups that are actively working together to take down the bad guy. In the TV show Supernatural, the hunters that are just out there, sometimes the heroes will run across these other hunters. We may know them for an episode and then they disappear. We know it's this network of people helping to save the world from monsters, but they aren't as integral to the plot as your heroes are. And you even have more fun representations like in Kung Fu Panda, where you have the Jade Palace, this group of people who are training and becoming martial artists. This is one of those examples of you have somebody within the society who has fallen outside of it and has become the villain. In the Dresden Files by Jim Butcher, they have the White Council. Sometimes they're helping the hero, sometimes they're opposing the hero, but they are the society that helps train him into the wizard he is today. And from the quote that we had today, you have the Scythedom, the group of people that are designated to carry out the mission of killing people for the better of society. Some of your common tropes are going to be things like the found family. The found family will overlap quite a bit with the society in the case of Oliver or Oliver Twist. It's important to note that often a found family is a group within a society or can be a group within a society because your found family tends to refer to groups smaller than 10 people while society is a group larger than 10 people. Another common trope would be the protectors of the realm. So you have this group of people who have been set aside by the world at large in order to protect the realm as a whole. So the Knights of the Round Table, the White Council, the Scythedom, the Jedi, this particular group of people is responsible for saving everyone. Let's get into the characters that are within this society and the traits that go along with that. Of course, we are going to be referring to them mostly as a group because that's what this society means. It is a group of people and often share the same goals, share similar traits. 
However, there is one exception for the sharing similar traits part, and that is for a society that you need differentiating capabilities, such as a heist story, where you need somebody who is good with explosives and somebody who is good at grifting and somebody who is being the front man and the public face. One of those common traits to identify if this is a society in this movie you just watched would be that team surrounding whatever project is happening with the characters. Another good indicator that that group of people is the society is they tend to be the ones that are in the know. They know some secret that most of the world does not know. Therefore, they are set apart and your hero gets involved with them because of however they're in the know somehow. Mistborn is a good example of that because your main crew of people all have the knowledge of allomancy, whereas the normal Ska people don't know that that is even a thing. Jedi also are an example of that, where they all have access to the Force, therefore they have something special about them. Another thing to look for is that the mentor character is usually deeply associated with the society. Sometimes they are part of it, they are a leader in it. In many cases, they will be in some kind of leadership role within the society. So you can think of Qui-Gon Jinn, of Obi-Wan Kenobi, who are on the council, who have been granted the rank of master. And this society, this leadership structure within the society that the mentor is part of, allows your main character to learn from other people as well, not just from their own mentor. So in the case of the Dresden Files, you have Ebenezer McCoy as his mentor, his teacher, who is part of this White Council. So there is a deep connection there. Also, in the example of Kung Fu Panda, Shifu is the teacher and soon the leader of the Jade Palace. But you have other members of the society teaching your hero something slightly different. Another common characteristic of the society is going to be the fact that they are secondary and tertiary characters. Yes, your main character will likely technically be part of the society, but they are not the society as a character. This means we will have a couple of named people that we know within the society, but the majority of the people that we're encountering are going to be tertiary. Again, Mistborn is a fantastic example because we see the Ska servants, we see the copper clouds, we notice and see the soothers and rioters, but we never are introduced to them. We just know they exist so that it gives this appearance of a well-developed and strong support structure underneath the main crew. Another common trait you're going to see with the society is there is a location that is deeply associated with this group of people. Sometimes it's an underground meeting place, it's the room of requirement, it's the Jedi temple. These societies are connected to a location. And of course, your society doesn't have to align perfectly with the goals of the main character, but it's close enough that they can work together towards a similar outcome. Now, what is the purpose in this story? Why is it helpful to have this separate group of tertiary characters compared to the random extras in the world as a whole? For one, it lets the main character know that they're not alone. They have someone to fall back on in case something goes wrong. Yeah, if you have just the hero who's fighting against the villain and nobody else is interested in picking up arms in this fight, they may not be capable but they're at least interested in fighting. If nobody else is interested in that fight, then we can start to question if the hero's in the right here. But, of course, they do have to fall by the wayside, otherwise the hero wouldn't be the hero that they are. Or it can be more of the heist style where I need you to distract the guards so I can slip in and disarm the bomb. And that is a fairly good way to play it if you don't want that division but they need to have something else that they're actively doing at the same time the main character is taking on the villain that is going to help support the ultimate goal, but isn't actually taking down the villain. Another great purpose for these characters is to have internal drama, to have those moments where the character wonders, am I doing the right thing? You have the society to ask those questions and to answer those questions. 
They are a very good place to fill in for the voice of the reader who may be questioning, is it okay that the main character just went and did this very extreme thing? Now your society can step in and say, whoa, that's not who we are. That's not what we're about. What are you doing? And like a lot of your secondary characters, they will have the same goal as your main character, but they might have different motivations feeding that goal. We all want to kill the dragon, but I want to kill the dragon because he ate my family. You want to kill the dragon because he has treasure. That guy over there wants to kill the dragon because he threatens a kingdom I'm trying to forge an alliance with. And the final purpose for the society is that it makes the danger real. Your society is a good group of people to kill. They are a great fodder to develop this connection with that your readers can like. And then when they fail, when they die, suddenly we are rooting even harder for the villain to fall. As you are creating your story, as you're creating your characters, don't forget to think about the society. Think about the structure underneath your main character that is going to support them as they progress and ultimately try to achieve their end goal. Not every story needs a society, but they are very helpful in a lot of cases, especially in your adventure and your action kind of stories. So if you have a question of how you want to do something, you know what you want to accomplish in your story, but you're not quite sure how to do it, look to your society. Can they fill that role? The twist at the end, where it turns out the society was working for the bad guy the whole time. Or, we need to make the villain look scary. The society can help solve that problem. So whatever problems you're having with your story, look to the society to answer them, and then when you put it to paper, write selfishly. If you have a question or comment for our hosts or a topic you'd like us to cover, send us an email at writingroots at aspenhousepublishing.com or find us on Facebook by searching for Aspen House Publishing.